My name is Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And we are dealing with a bunch of bad dogs at the moment. Please give us a second so that we can get everybody out of the way and dealt with here. And they're all going to rise up like they always do. And our apologies. One second here. <clears throat> yes. And so here we are, everybody. We thank you guys very, very much as the family contains these nine furry critters uh, who have decided to rise up here. We are going to get the show on the road. So much love to everybody out there. We are the people who believe that the laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator that are found in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy are the guidelines for life. We believe that our priest, our high priest, his name is Yahushua, most people know him as Jesus the Christ, is going to come back and he's going to reign and he's going to have, reign for a thousand years where we are able to pull, he's going to reign forever, but the first thousand years we hopefully will get to reign with him. And this is our hopes and that our dreams is that we are able to find this kingdom to come, that we are able to find the people of our creator and the, the people of our creator are far different than the rest of the world. The rest of the world is right now enjoying festival holidays. They are getting ready for new years when it's not a new year in anything but except the Gregorian satanic calendar. And so we have people that are, this is the, the deck the halls time. This is, we wish you a Merry Christmas, right? We, we, this is the time that everybody is on their knees to Satan right now and they're going to get their kids on their knees. They're going to go before a, a pine tree that we've been told in Jeremiah that we should absolutely not cut down. And they're going to cut it down and they're going to put it in their house. And they are going to get their kids and they're going to bow on their knees with these presents underneath of a tree that is adorned with balls of silver and gold and a, a star on the top of it. And this is the, the world that we are in, that the entire world has accepted the day of Satan. And it not only have they accepted it, but they've embraced it. And for those who do not embrace it, you're called fuddy duddies. Uh, they the old what do they call them? Um, Scrooges, right? We were called Scrooges if we don't enjoy the the festival time. If we do not embrace Satan like the rest of the world, we are the outcasts. And we absolutely should be the outcasts because if you are decking your halls around with reindeer antlers on your cars and you're embracing the satanic holiday you are part of the world your daddy is hasatan that is what the scriptures say we are told to stay away from pagan holidays we're told to stay away from all this evil all this evil stuff that we are but yet here we are on the day of satan coming across we have what uh 15 days left 10 days left till till this uh very very satanic holiday. and so those are what separates the people of yah from the people of Hasatan. And the people of Hasatan are gonna have these missile toes, they're gonna have all of the satanic stuff and they're gonna embrace it. And they're gonna and they're gonna like it. And unfortunately, even everybody, everybody is in on this whole scheme and you just it is really hard to find people that don't celebrate these wicked wicked holidays. And so if you are um those people who do not celebrate the wicked wicked holidays, we uh salute you. We are we thank you guys for following Yah's ways, and we can't wait to meet you guys in the kingdom to come. All right, uh, Jade, start us off. Hear, O Yisrael, Yahu our Elohim, Yahu is one. You shall love Yahu your Elohim with all your heart, with all your being, with all your might. And these words I am commanding you today shall be in your heart. You shall impress them upon your children, and shall speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. And shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as friendly between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Okay. That is the Shema, and that is the, a huge piece of biblical doctrine that we have right here where it tells us our Elohim is one. He is not two. He is not three. He's not multiple. He is a jealous Elohim, which means he's not going to share his deity with anybody, and he never has and never will. Now, his son, 
is the son. It is the son of the Most High who came, who walked the Torah absolutely perfect, and was killed for it. Okay, start us off in prayer. Christian Father, we thank you once again for this day that you have set apart for us. You appointed, you said, if you will follow my commands, I will be your people. And you told us to take this day and rest on this day and to spend time with you on this day. And we are here doing your commands. We ask that it's counted as righteousness for us. We ask that the people here with us are also blessed, that it also counted as righteousness for them, that they are part of the family of you, that we are all part of your family, that we're doing your will today, and that we are learning from your word what you have set out for us to read today, what you have made for your people to read for thousands of years later. We ask that we get something good from it, that we ask that we get what we need. And if there's anyone new here that you change their hearts today, that you show them the way, that you show them your Torah, and that you, the works of Yahushua can be shown through them. We ask all this in Yahushua's name. Amen. Absolutely. The works of Yahushua. And the works of Yahushua keep the commandments. And he says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And all throughout scriptures, from the front of the book, all the way to the end of the book, it is the exact same theme. If you keep my commandments, I, who's talking about Yahuwah, will be your Elohim. And um, it goes opposite as well. If we decide not to keep the commandments, then Hasatan is our lowercase Elohim by default. There's no middle road. There's no 50-50. You can't edge to one, one side and you can't, you can't sit there and dabble in the world, have one foot in the, the world's pool and expect that we are going to be worthy of the kingdom to come. The kingdom to come is for people who have chosen Yahuwah's ways and his ways are found in the Torah. And this is what we will be reading right now. We will be reading the laws, statutes and commandments of our creator and we will put them before you guys. And if anybody out there has any kind of questions or any kind of comments, uh, definitely put it in the comments section. What we're reading that they read way back in the days when the people activity and the people didn't know the Torah. This is what the people started reading. And when the, the Nehemiah and Ezra started reading these, these books, these, these laws, the people started crying. The people stopped, they, they stopped doing what they were doing and they started to rejoice and they realized that there was a better way, a way forward. And these modern day religions of set and forget it, raise your hand at eight years old and you're saved, unsaved, always saved. Doctrine tells us that is not the way. Doctrine tells us very clearly out of Messiah's own mouth that many people will try to cast out demons. Many people will do so many things in the name of our Messiah and he will tell them all to depart from him. Because you work lawlessness, because you work Torahlessness, you have been rejected from the kingdom. This is Matthew. So if you are looking for the kingdom road, if we want to be a follower of Christ, which is what a Christian is supposed to be, you're supposed to be a follower of Christ, our Messiah kept the commandments, he kept the Torah, he kept the appointed times, and he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And he's only doing the will of his father. He comes in the name of his father with the direction of his father and will do everything his father did, which is why he became the ultimate sacrifice for us, which is why his death on the stake was our way to break the curse of, the, of breaking the Torah. We have a, a blessings and we have curses. When we keep the Torah, we're blessed. But from the time that we put our hand in that cookie jar at three years old and we steal a cookie, we fall under the curse of it. And the curse is spiritual death. Our Messiah came and did it and he, he he gave us a way out of these sinful lands that we are walking where the, everybody is literally getting on their knees to satan and it you're you're the outcast if you don't do it so this is where we are into the laws statutes and commands which we read every shabbat and we're going to read them with you right now did you have anything did you want to say hi to everybody oh let's say hi to everybody let's do it all right we have jeremy callen what's up callen what's up little buddy and then we have a new name, Hazel Williams. Hi, Hazel. Days Rainy. Hey, Days Rainy. Ruby. Ruby. Candy. And Candy. And Irma. And Irma. And Mama CAA. Awesome. Good Cindy, to see you. Cindy LJ and Ollie. Oh, Cindy LJ and Ollie. And Ollie, if you're. Sure test too. Yeah, Ollie, if you're here, much love to you, you little brother. Um, much love to you. And uh, give your mama a hug. And Cindy, give, give little Ollie a hug for us, will you? We have another new name, King Waymaker. Hi. Uh, Donna is another new name, Donna Haysmith. Hi, Donna. And let's see, 
got Mama CA, Jeannie out of this world. Yay, Jeannie's here. Emissary Elohim. Sweet, Donna says she's here from North Carolina. What's up, Donna from North Carolina? And I think that's everybody. If we missed you, please, please, please accept our apologies. Um, oh, Emissary, did you say hi to Emissary of Elohim? I said him uh, okay. said Donna. <laughs> yeah, so Emissary of Elohim is um, a good buddy of ours, and we really, really appreciate all of you guys, man. You guys are all family to us. We are we're not, you know, if you guys are like um, preachers or anything of the sort, that is absolutely not us. We are simply a group of family. We are reading together as scriptures from the middle of the jungles of South America. And we love scriptures. We love the laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator. We love Yah's people. And we love Yah's people because it's very, very rare that we find commandment-keeping people anywhere around. And so all of our family that we have, our natural family, they've completely disowned us and our ways. They are, uh, you know, they, they are people that just don't care about anything other than just worldly stuff. And so it doesn't matter how much we try and try to bring them around to Yah's ways. We don't have a tremendous amount of family. So we consider all of you guys, especially in this live chat, family. And we've we've talked with you guys over the years and we, we really, really appreciate uh, the, the, the camaraderie that we have amongst Yah's people because Yah's people mostly are all the same. And even though we get our times wrong, even though we get our dates wrong, even though we can't figure out certain calendars and various things, we're here trying. We're here tr doing everything we can possibly do to get into sync with the ways of the kingdom to come. And the, the ways of the kingdom to come are built upon the Torah. And the Torah, again, is the first five books of scriptures and it's, it's alive. It's, it, the, the Torah is alive. It's all around us. It, it, the, the ways of the Torah are things that we can implement in every facet of our life. We can have it guide our lives. It can be a litmus test against everything in this world. And if we get near breaking of the Torah, then we know that we should step back from what we are doing because we are going to be having our father frown upon the, the actions and deeds that we have. If he does it, it means everything from the dietary laws all the way down to where you don't drink blood, you don't eat fat. It all makes a difference. And so we are the people who are attempting to try to bring all of these things that make a difference, things in our lives that we hope that you guys will embrace into your guys' lives. And this is all scripture. What you will never find at this channel is you will not find man-made doctrines. You will not find anything other than just the straight scriptures. And, and that's all we have. We, we preach against, not preach, we teach against Christianity. We, we teach against the rest of these 50,000 billion religions that are out there where not a single one of them follows scriptures. You will not find it. You can go to any religion anywhere and you can ask them for what they believe and they will give it. And if you put that against what scripture says, they're all going to be off. And so we want to find the kingdom path and the kingdom road isn't in man-made temples. It's not made in anything other than scriptures themselves. So here are the commandments of Yah that we are going to go over. And if anybody has any questions as we're doing it, um, let's uh, discuss them in the chat. Okay. Um, Mr. Cole, do you have something? Anything? Uh, just we have a couple more people to join. All right. Bone Cat One. Bone Cat One. What's we up? We need y'all, which is Diane. Hi, Dan. And Brother Glenn. And Brother Glenn made it. Big hugs to Marina as well. Big hugs to Brother Glenn. Much love to all the guys out there. All right. Commandment number one is to be fruitful. Commandment number two: multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over. They are bearing in every tree is for food. Man, woman should build their own families. Master sin. Every clean moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Do not eat the blood. Walk before me and be perfect. Guard Yahuwah's laws, statutes, and commandments. Every male shall be circumcised eight days old. Teach your children commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Keep the Passover, Pesach. Did I just miss one? Yeah, yeah remember sorry. Yahuwah's name for all generations. Now get the Passover now. Keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Festival of Massa. There is one Torah for the stranger and the Hebrew. Sanctify all firstborn. To Yahuwah. There are no mighty ones before Yahuwah. You shall not make graven images. Do not bring Yahuwah's name, do not. Keep the Sabbath. And if you guys notice, there's a lot of scriptures right here that talk about it. And if you do a search on Sabbath throughout all of scriptures, it's everywhere, including the Apocrypha. There is there's one thing that's very, very clear when you read the scriptures is the seventh day is a day that is very, very important to our Creator. It is important to Him because it is what fixes us. 
we can cruise and we can we can go hardcore six days a week but if you continue on and you keep going seven days uh, seven days your body breaks down when you start keeping shabbat your body changes your heart changes your mind changes and you get that rest and that is why we have an amazing side hasatan he'll have you work seven days a week 24 hours rest of your life and you'll never have a day off and your body never recovers but yet our creator knows that we need this day of rest to chill to get caught up and to get close to him okay next honor your parents do not kill do not break wedlock do not steal do not make false accusations against your neighbor do not covet anything of your neighbors do not make an altar from rock that a tool is touched do not go up to the altar by the steps if a man steals cattle he shall restore it five times who has laws for criminals? Do not lie with beasts. No sacrifice to other gods. Do not oppress a stranger, fatherless, or widow. Do not charge your brother interest. If you borrow your neighbor's raiment, return it to him before sunset. Do not curse the ruler of your people. If you borrow your neighbor's raiment, return it to him before sunset. I miss. I probably jacked that up. I'm like trying to read the comments as well as this. You guys just read through these. Right. Where are we Thirty-nine. Thirty. Uh, I don't 30, have a number. Thirty-eight. Right. Do not curse the ruler of your people. Do not eat what is torn of any beast. No false report. Do not follow them through evil. Do not judge them nicely against the poor. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find going astray. Help the animals of your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Take no bribes. Do not oppress the stranger. Love the stranger. Give your land rest in the seventh year. Do not mention any pagan names. Keep the feast of Yahuwah. Do not cook your goat in his mother's milk. Obey the messenger Yahuwah sends before you. Do not bow down to other Elohim. Serve Yahuwah. Make no covenant with our Elohim or outside of the land. Do not make or use anointing oil on an old person. Do not make or use perfume on an old person. Do not eat the fat. Do what you say you are going to do. Return what is your neighbor's. Obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. Women okay. Let's let's talk about this real quick. Obeying Yahuwah's dietary laws. I was I was thinking about this the other night when I was um I think it was Cindy L J that posted a picture of uh, I think it was lobster. It was supposed to be lobster and, and Brother Glenn was like um is that cockroaches. And it looked a lot like cockroaches. It looked like. So I started thinking about this. And as we are understanding the Levitical dietary guidelines that we have, and it's all found in Leviticus 11 is where this is at. But the animals that we eat are animals that do not kill other animals and eat them. The things, and, and I didn't think about this till later, but th this is something, you know, we have uh, everything. Let's let's name off some clean food real quick, boys. Cows, yep. goats, yep. chickens, yep. sheep. And all of those things right there, they are not carnivorous, right? Don't go out and kill things and eat them. Now, what are some things that are unclean? Pig, Vultures, pig. ravens, pigs. Lobster. Lobster. Shrimp. Shrimp. Horse. Yeah. Now, every one of these little things that we just mentioned are they, they go around and they eat the dead bodies of things. They eat feces. They eat all sorts of dead stuff. And as you are, and I've said this before, but I've talked about it, you can take a, a pile of shrimp and you can put it into a bucket of dirty water and that has really, really stuff that you couldn't drink. And inside of several weeks, after the shrimp are in there, that water has been cleaned up. What we're dealing with is we're dealing with, with our creator's um, janitors. And so when we eat unclean food, we're literally eating the janitor that has just cleaned up a pile of nastiness. Same for catfish, right? Those are very disgusting animals. And people, you know, the other day people were talking about catfish. You can't actually put catfish into um, sushi. And they were talking about it because you will die from it. Because there's something about catfish being the absolute bottom dwellers that if you put that raw fish into uh, a sushi, you, you'll die from it. And so I didn't know that. But what we have with dietary laws is we have a, 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 an amazing understanding of what is to eat and what is not eat. And one of the greatest problems the Christians have is getting rid of that Christian cotton candy, which is the pig, right? They love it. It is like trying to take candy away from a baby. And when you explain to people that pigs, pig and lobster and shrimp, it's not good for you. It may taste incredible. It may taste like you're on cloud nine, but it is not good for the human system. The, the kind of parasites that live and dwell inside of swine 
are, you can't just eat this stuff. That's why you sit there and fry it and fry it and fry it. And yet other people all, all around the world end up in hospitals all year round because they, they have some kind of bugs inside these pigs. Now these pigs can live just fine with the parasites. They don't have any problem. But we are told by our creator that, hey, you guys can have a better way forward. And when you attempt to ask Christians about pigs and talk to them about the pigs, they get very angry with you because they love their swine. They love their bacon. And it's something that I, I don't, you know, it's one of these things that I, I find it fascinating that people are unwilling to give up their pig when it comes to the commandments of our creator. And the first thing that anybody will tell you is like, well, in the book of Matthew, all, all, all food has been made clean right? That is the very first thing they'll tell you. The second thing they'll tell you is that uh, Peter had a dream. And on the dream, all these dirty, filthy animals came down and the command was to slay and eat. Both of these out of context will get you into a lot of trouble. The very first thing where Messiah made all food clean has nothing to do with food being made clean. It has to do with a tradition of man that Messiah was trying to break these people of, which was washing their hands before they ate. When you read this in context, their argument to Messiah was, why do your Talmudian, why do your, the people following you not wash their hands like the traditions of the elders? You will read this to the Christians and they're like, it doesn't matter. All food has been made clean. You explain to them the dream that Peter had, had nothing to do about food at all. It had everything to do about being able to minister to the, to the Gentile people, the people that were not in the Judaism race. Our creator said to Peter, go preach to these guys. Don't call them unclean animals anymore because everybody is able to find the way forward if they are willing to find their way forward. All right, 62. Women's time of separation. Stay away from them. Obey Yahuwah's hygiene. Thank you, Dev Tom and Yom HaKivarim. Do not uncover the nakedness of your family. Do not take a woman's sister for wife. Do not lie with a woman in her uncleanness. You shall not sacrifice your children or Moloch. Do not be a sodomite. Be holy. Do not reap the corn of your field, or you shall not in your vineyard. Do not deal falsely, or defraud your neighbor. Do not lie, or be a liar. Do or pay your workers the day's wage they are due. Do not harm the disabled. Do not endanger your neighbor. Or rebuke your neighbor for his sin. Uh, do we do not hate your brother? Yeah, okay. we should do that again. If, if you, here, read that one real yeah, quick. One. No, yeah, I think you, you did skip it, one. Yeah. I think you did skip one in life. Now, let's uh, go back there and read that again. Do not hate your brother. Do not hate your brother. What does that mean? Do not hate your brother. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Huh? It mother. is pretty self-explanatory, but for all of us out there, this is for not just for us where we have issues loving our brothers in this house, but it is for it's part of the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator. Our Creator loves everybody, and He wants us to have respect for everybody. He wants us to love them, love our brother, people that we have hate to our fellow man. If we have hate to our brother. Absolutely never ever going to find the way to our creator. If we have taken somebody and go, oh, this guy, this guy, he's not good, you know, for whatever reason, but yet we are unwilling to minister to them. We're unwilling to love them. Loving them means showing them the way because there is still a tremendous amount of people that have to find the way. If we're talking about Hebrews 8, Hebrews 8 tells us that there is a time that's going to come that everybody is going to know Yah's Torah. Everybody's going to know the way. You're not going to have to explain it to anybody because everybody that's anybody is keeping the Torah. We're not there yet. We're not even close to being there yet. So this is why we all, as individuals, have an opportunity to love our brother. And when you love somebody outside of the normal, they're going to be responsive to you. They're going to be, they're going to be receptive to what you're talking about. They're going to want to see why you love them when other people don't love them. So this is a, a chance and a change that we can all have where we can minister to everybody, but it comes with loving. And when we look down on people, when we hate them, you're never, ever going to be able to minister to them because they're not going to be receptive. 78, rebuke your neighbor for his sin. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do not diverse your Do not mingle linen and wool. Do not lie with the tame woman. Do not eat through the tree for three years. Do not practice sorcery. Do not round your beard with the corners of your head. Do not cut yourself for the dead. Do not prostitute your daughter. Do not, not get tattoos. Yeah. Do not file your temple. Respect your elders. Do not, you, uh, do not consult the medium. Respect your elders. Slow down, fellas. So you, yeah. Slow down, fellas, so you can get this right, please. Have correct weights and measures. 
Do not walk in the manners of the nation. Keep the feast of first fruits, Shavuot, Omer count, Pentecost. Keep, keep the feast of trumpets, Yom Teruah. Keep the feast of goats, Shemini Atzra. If you blaspheme the name of Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. If you kill your neighbor's animal, you must give him another. Repay injury for injury. Honor your bell, Jubilee year. Confess your sins to Yahuwah and repay who you have trespassed against. The Torah be an Azir. Where is easy on the four corners of your garments? The laws of whoever touches a corpse. Follow Yahuwah's Torah. Keep your oath, Yahuwah. That add or take away from the word. Very important, guys. I'm going to stop real quick and make a, a quick point on this. Deuteronomy 4.2 is, 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 is something that everyone needs to understand. All these man-made doctrines that we have, that we've accumulated, say, for instance, we decide we want to worship on a Sunday, on a first day, right? The day of the sun, Sol Victus, the day that has been pagan since the beginning of time. They, they, all the Catholics, Constantine, all of these guys, they wrapped all of this up in there to try to group everybody under the same thing. Sunday's the wrong day. But if we are believing that Sunday is the right day, and if we are going in to um, hang out, one Sunday, we're, we're adding to or taking, we're taking away from the word. The same as, you know, a, a, an easy one to, to debunk is a Catholic religion, right? According to the Catholics, you have to say penance. You have to go into a little box with some guy who's just some sinner like everyone else, and you have to tell him your sins. And this guy in the box will literally tell you your sins are forgiven and to go sin no more. He'll tell you what you need to do for penance and that you need to say seven Hail Marys and then it's all said and done, right? None of that is scripture. Not a single thing is scripture. When we call a, a, a Pope the father, right? It clearly says, Messiah says, we're not to call anyone father, but yet you have taken a, a religion and Catholicism is an easy one because it's just straight satanic. And it's everything about it from the beginning of it to the very end of it is completely satanic. And that really upsets a lot of Catholics. But if you want to defend it, let's defend it with the word of our creator. We are not to do what the Catholics do. They have graven images all over the place from the beginning of their little churches to the very end. All of their mass that they do where they are uh, everything. It, the, the complete system is satanic. But at the same time, it's the, it's the, it's the Christian religion is completely satanic. They will have you doing and eating unclean foods. You don't have any laws. You've nailed the laws of our creator to a cross. And then you don't have to keep them because Messiah came and fulfilled them, which is an absolute lie. He came and made them full. He went and walked the Torah absolutely perfectly, which is what fulfill means. It doesn't mean that he abolished what his, create, what his dad had done for us for all time. The Torah is, is a gift. It is something that if we put it on the cross, we are giving back a gift that we've been given. And the Torah will keep us alive. That's the point of the Torah. It keeps us alive spiritually and physically. All right, continue on. Guard your soul. Learn to fear Yahuwah. You shall love Yahuwah with all your heart. Bind the laws upon your hands and the frontlets between your eyes. Write the Torah uh, on your doorpost. God tempt Yahuwah. Do what is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. Do not be afraid of your enemies. Remember Yahuwah. Circumcise your heart. Cleave to Yahuwah. Swear by his name. Destroy your favorite images. Do not make an idol of Yahuwah as the pagans do their Elohim. Rejoice in all Yahuwah has blessed you with. Do not do what is right in your eyes. Do not hearken to the words of the false prophets. Do not make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. You shall not eat any vulnerable thing. All right, let's hold on real quick. Where are we at? One 128. Number, 128. All right, so let's talk. I think it was Jeannie who was talking about. Um, Jeannie, there is nothing more glorious looking on a woman with a pair of tzitzits. Um, if you have some tzitzits on, um, Nicole's been sporting these things around for, what, eight years? Something of the sort. Um, it is a, yeah, I would absolutely wear tzitzits. If you've never worn tzitzits before, um, there is no command about being female or male. It's the sons and, and literally the sons and daughters of, of Yashrael who were commanded to wear them. And so it is a commandment. And not only that, is it's it's one of those marks of Yah's people. When you're going around and you're wearing tzitzits, it is unfortunate. Most people will look at you and go, oh, you're Jewish. And then you're like, well, no, we're not Jewish. We, we, don't, we don't go to that religion either. That, that's just a man-made religion of all these things. But we are told that we need to wear tzitzits. And in the end times, when people see people with tzitzits, and they will say, take us to your Elohim. Show us the path to Elohim Most High. And that's where we show them the Torah. That's where we show them the gospel. That's where we show them the, the, the greatness of our creator because we have found it. 
And when you are starting to wear seats, it is something that you don't really want to leave the house without. And so we all wear, I don't, I will not leave my gates without seats on. I will not, I would do not go anywhere without seats. It, it feels to me like a covenant, like a piece that if I am going without seats, um, it's a problem. And in the past, we've actually found people. We were at, a, you know, it was like 10 years ago, we were at some little, uh, what we call a gringo market here. And we had people come up to us and say, hey, who are you? And why do you have blue in your seats versus the white? And um, that just leads you into uh, these conversations that you can have about the commandments and, you know, more things that our creator has told us to do. Okay. Was there anything else on that? Okay. Uh, on 27? I don't know where I hit it. You shall not eat any abominable thing. You shall give it to a stranger of clean food that dies of self, but you shall not eat of it. Give tithe of your increase of self. And the seven-year lease. Do not borrow from the nation. Do not harden your heart, nor shut your Guard month one of Yahuwah's calendar. Three times a year, all male shall appear before Yahuwah. You shall make judges and officers in all your gates. Do not, not, do not plant ashel poles near the altar. There must be two or three witnesses. Hearken unto the Nabi, prophet of the prophet Yahuwah has chosen. The prophet has to Deuteronomy. Do, do not remove your neighbor's property line. How to deal with false witness among Torah keepers. The first child is to get a dull portion. If your brother's cattle or clothes are lost and you find them, you must return them. A woman should not wear what pertains to a man, nor a man wear what pertains to a woman. If you find a bird's nest, the mother and the babies, or eggs, take the babies, but not the mother. If you build a new house, they have a flat roof that it will be lived on. You must put a railing around it. Do not be a prostitute. Uh, Do not use dirty money. Law of divorce. Do not take a person's millstone for a pledge. If you lend your brother, do not enter his house to get your payment. He must bring it to you. Return his clothing before sunset, if that was his pledge. Do not oppress a hired servant that is poor and needy. Every man shall put to death for his own sin. Do not go back for the forgotten chief in the field, either for the stranger, fatherless, and widow. Do not mull your ox when he treads out grain. If your brother dies and has no child, you shall take his wife and the firstborn after your brother. At the end of the seven years, you are to read the Torah at the feet of Sukkot. All right, so there we have it. And as Eli is, is getting us set up on there, I, I saw it. Um, who is it? Irma. It was Irma. I don't know if it was Irma. I actually thought I saw Jeremy stuff. That is how you absolutely know the difference between people that are in covenant with our creator and people that are out of covenant with our creator is, is not only with the Zizi, but the color of the Zizi. And you will not find Jewish people wearing any kind of blue in their Zizi. In fact, it is against in their Talmudic uh, books. They believe that they lost that color of blue back in the day or something or however they figured out the color blue so instead of them coming up with a blue of any kind they simply wear white and the white is not in scriptures it never says anything about white in there it says blue it's a blue thing it's 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 yah's colors and when you read the old testament it's very very clear yah's like yah's favorite colors are blue purplish it's like uh everything he made the temples with it was always had like blue every so you'll want to wear real seat seats that don't have, I, I know people still put white in them. Every ZC we do is strictly blue because there's just no commandment. And I know the, the girls like to do foo-foo stuff and throw like white in there. And I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it as long as we have um, the majority of the colors being blue. Okay. Now, what we're about to do, guys, is we're about to read Exodus 16. And this is from Yah's scriptures. And yesterday, by the end of the day, um, they, uh, sword completely done and so we released sword module for a pc and for a mac not for cell phones it's been released mr cole will throw a link in there for the two files there's two files you need if you guys use each sword you'll need a uh, it's ttf right yeah TTF it's, it's a ttf the bbli file and mr cole will stick these in there or you can just go to the downloads if you guys need any help Getting these on a Windows or a, a Macintosh, let us know. We're always here to help. We're here to support. But this is a hefty eSword module because it has all of the Apocrypha that eSword allows. And it's not all of the Apocrypha. But we filled in every place possible that we could get scriptures that the eSword allowed. And so it is a very, very big eSword um, program. And it is actually really, really nice. And so we're... we're we're hoping, and if you guys would actually send a few prayers up for us, this is our, our request, is that we are able to figure out the the phone version of this. And right now, the way with the P Paleo Hebrew is in phones, 
we don't know if we can get it in the phones, but the majority of the people that use eSword seem to use it on their phones. And so we are diligently trying to figure this out and how to get the paleo. The rest of it works fine on the, on the phones. You can read it and everything, but it doesn't have the paleo for our, our creator and his son's name. And that's the main thing that we're trying to make sure is it's trying to re get restored as far as that goes. That's you, what I meant by Irma. Irma. She downloaded it. Oh, yeah, Irma. So yeah, that's so. That's what I thought when you said I thought it was Irma. Yeah, so, so yeah. thank you, Irma, for downloading that and getting it on there. We've had a few reports of people that got it working. Um, it, it's, it is really a, uh, an, an art to do this, and it's really, really a blessing. We, we've been privileged to have this opportunity to do this. So we're, uh, we're just trying to figure out the phone. If we can dial in the phone, we will literally be able to get Yah's scriptures into like everybody that has eSword on their phones, which is a, a lot of people. All right, so with that, guys, we are reading at the bottom, we're reading Yah's scriptures, um, and at the top, we are reading the Targums of Exodus as well. And you can download the PDF. Yes, and they can, you, oh, and also the PDF is completely free. Every, every version of Yah's scriptures is completely free. You guys can download it, pass it around, please do. Um, it's small enough, the PDF version is small enough. If, Nicole, can you throw the PDF in there as well? The PDF is small enough that for anybody that wants a restored name scriptures, you guys can email this to them. So simply uh, attach it in an email and send it off. And, you know, it, it's, people may read it. They may not read it. But it's small enough that we can get this worldwide out to people. So, again, thank you to everybody who's downloaded. Thank you to everybody who's been supportive. And thank you to everybody for, at the Yahoo and the Torah channel. We love you all. Okay, here we are. Exodus 16. Um, somebody quite give me a... Uh, where, are we, where are we at to this point in Exodus 16? Anyone? Once Moses ended all his plagues and got the children of Israel out the cross the Red Sea, that was something that he usually, nobody's ever seen, right? The sea opened up, made a path for them to walk, and as Pharaoh came to take his people down, uh, the waters closed and saved the children of Israel. They all sung a song of happiness. They all were praising Yah, thanking him for his salvation. And then, not very long later, they started all complaining because they had no water. It was three days later, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, three days later, they went from celebration to um, sadness, which is something that hopefully we can all take notes of, that, you know, we, we need to be, we need to praise our creator more in sadness than probably in happiness. You know, when, when things, when we're being tested, when we're being tried, this is when we really need to praise our creator because... There's things in the supernatural that none of us can see. There's things around us that none of us are able to understand. And that is why the power of prayer is something that is incredible. And why I, I think I'm going to coin, coin the phrase is that we all need to start praying until we start praying. And oftentimes we sit there, I will sit there and my mind gets, I, I just start praying and my mind is gone. All of a sudden I'm like thinking about things. I'm like, wow. And I apologize to our creator. I'm like, wow, I'm really, really sorry. I have an attention span of a goldfish. I can't even, I can't even like keep in prayer for 30 seconds. So it is an art that we need to do. We need to get in communication with our creator. He absolutely listens. He absolutely has the power of legions of angels that can help us and deal with the things that we're encountering. So don't forget prayer as uh, an essential part of this walk. Okay, Exodus 16, here we go. And they departed from Elim, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after their going out of the land of Mitzrayim. And all the congregation of the children of Israel grumbled against Moshe and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said to them, if only we had died by the hand of Yahuwah in the land of Mitzrayim, when we sat by the pots of meat, and when we ate bread to satisfaction. For you have brought us up, brought us out of this wilderness to put us all this assembly to death with hunger. So um, here we are. Right? We're, we're complaining again. Moshe ended up with a whole bunch of adolescent kids that are all complaining. They will not stop grumbling. And... Um, the faith of these people seems to be gone. And so first it was water, now it's hunger. And um, again, would we be different? Would we be those people that are different? Would we be praising Yah without food? We can do that all in this life that we're in right now, right? A lot of us have problems finding food a lot of times. Are we praising him with very minimal or are we, we complaining? Four, and Yahuwah said to Moshe, see, I am raining bread from the Shemaim for you. And the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day in order to try them, whether they walk in my Torah or not. 
And it shall be on the sixth day that they shall prepare what they bring in. And it shall be twice as much as they. And this is one of these things that it's the sixth day, right? If we had our seventh day wrong, then we would have been without food, which is why this Sabbath day is vitally important that we are keeping it, that we're getting in alignment because there might be a time when we are all called back to Yisrael. There might be a second Exodus where manna might start raining again and there's definitely going to be Sabbaths. There's definitely going to be appointed times. There's definitely going to be a Torah keeping in the kingdom to come. And so if we don't pick up our food on the sixth day, you're going to go hungry on the seventh. Okay, now we're heading up to the tar. And the whole congregation of Yashrael journeyed from El and came to the desert of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the month of I don't even know what the word is. Ijar? I don't even know. This sounds like uh, some sort of Jewish uh, naming scheme to me. The second month from going out forth from the land of Mizraim. And on that day, the bread which they had brought out of Mitzraim was finished. And all the sons of Yashrael grumbled against Moshe and against Aaron in the desert. And the sons of Yashrael said to them, Would we have died by the word of Yahuwah in the land of Mitzraim when we sat by the cisterns of meat and ate bread and had enough? Why have you brought us out of this wilderness to kill us, to kill all this congregation with hunger? And Yahuwah, sorry guys, said to Moshe, Behold, I will cause the bread which has been laid up for you from the beginning to descend from heaven. And the people shall go out and gather the matter of a day by the day that I may try them whether or not they keep the commandments of my Torah or not. So here we go. You know, this is uh, essentially the test of our life is this bottom part of this verse, right? Our creator has given us the word of our creator, him, right? He's given us all this. He's given us the understanding, but why? Well, I would, I would surmise that it is that we, whether or not we will keep the commandments of Yah's Torah or not, right? The same concept for them goes for us. Will we obey the, the Shabbat? Will we obey the appointed times? Will we keep our dietary guidelines? Will we obey the commandments or not? And that is what the resume is that we are all living. Will we be, will we be to the higher power and succumb to his ways, which his ways are very, very good. And I would like to surmise that the other ways will lead us to death. When we're eating unclean food, when we're, we're doing horrible things, it will lead us to a physical death that is, is a very bad death. We shouldn't be doing this. Our creator's here to keep us alive. All right, now I'm heading back to Yah's scriptures at the bottom. And Moshe and Aaron said to all the children of Yisrael, at evening you shall know that Yahuwah has brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim. And in the morning you shall see the esteem of Yahuwah, for he hears your grumblings against Yahuwah. And what are we that you grumble against us? And essentially, guys, this is, this is the same as what I'm talking about with prayer, right? Yah hears our grumblings. He also hears our prayers. Right, And this is why we need to be thankful to him for everything. If you're down to your last egg in your house, you have less than a bag of lentils left, you need to praise Yah that you still have that. When you are out of food completely, then you need to praise Yah that, he is, that he's here. We can, we can all go through these trials and tribulations, but if we have Yah as our Elohim Most High, he will walk with us and he will guide us even through these very tricky times that all of us little humans end up with. Okay. Seven, and in the morning you shall see the esteem of Yahuwah, for he hears your grumblings against Yahuwah, and what are we that you grumble against us? And Moshe said, in that Yahuwah gives you meat to eat in the evening, and in the morning bread to satisfaction, for Yahuwah hears your grumblings which you make against him. And what are we? Your grumblings are not against us, but against Yahuwah. And Moshe said to Aaron, say to all the congregation of the children of Yisrael, come near before Yahuwah, for he has heard your grumblings. And it came to be, as Aaron spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness and see, the esteem of Yahuwah appeared in the cloud. Moshe saying, I have heard the grumblings of the children of Israel. Speak to them, saying, Between the evenings you are to eat meat, and in the morning you are to be satisfied with bread, and you shall know that I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Okay, let's go back up to, Yaj, to uh, the Targums at the top. Let's get down to this part. Six, and Moshe and Aaron said to all the sons of Yashrael at evening, you shall know that Yahuwah has brought you out of the, out 
free from the land of myth. We reveal to you the glory of the presence of Yahuwah. And we, what are we accounted? That you complain against us. And Moshe said, by this you shall know when Yahuwah prepares you at evening flesh to eat and in the morning bread to satisfy that your complaining wherewith you complain against him are heard before Yahuwah. And we, what are we accounted? Your complaints are not against us. Moshe said to Aaron, bid all the congregation of the draw nigh before Yahuwah, for your murmurings are heard before him. And it was while Aaron was speaking with all the congregation of Yashrael that they turned toward the desert. And behold, the glory of the majesty of Yahuwah was revealed in the cloud of glory. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Hearing I have heard the trial before me, speak you with them, saying, You shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall eat bread, and you shall know that I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Okay, now we're heading back to Yah's scriptures at the bottom. We're going to find out exactly what kind of meat is coming their way. And it came to be that quails came up at the evening and covered the camp. And in the morning, the dew lay all around the camp. And the layer of dew went up and brown substance, as fine as frost on the ground. And the children of Yashrael saw, and they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moshe said to them, it is the bread which Yahuwah has given you to eat. This is the word which Yahuwah has commanded. Let every man gather it according to one's need. An omer for one being, according to the number of beans. Let every man take for those who are in his tent. You guys remember back when we figured out what exactly an omer was? How much was that? Anyone remember? It was, it was quite a bit, was it? It was quite a bit. Yeah. Do you remember what it was? No. Like, it was cups and cups of flour, right? Or something of the yeah, sort? Yeah, I want to say it's like it, it was it, it was a it was a lot it was enough for you know a, definitely a meal absolutely meals and, and whatnot so um it's a lot if you guys are wondering what that was uh it might have been eight cups because i think it was a quart sized jar yeah a quart sized jar of flour ground up and you can make a lot of stuff for sure okay uh 17 and the children of israel did so and gathered some more some less and they measured it by omers and he who gathered much did not have too much and he who gathered little did not have too little. Each one gathered according to his need. And Moshe said, let no one leave any of it. And they did not listen to Moshe. So some of them left part of it until morning, and it bred worms and stank. And Moshe was wroth with them. And they gathered it every morning, each one according to his need. And when the sun became hot, it melted. All right, so... Other scriptures we have pe they, that people said this was like uh, angel food, right? This was like the, the, the food of angels or angel bread. Do you guys remember that? What that was? What Do you remember what book that was? Mm, I want Somebody. to say it was like Jubilees. Yeah, I, I don't remember. I can't remember what it was, but this is some amazing stuff. What do you guys make of it that it melts when the sun comes out? If, yet if you pick it up, prior to that, it doesn't melt. That's uh, the power of, yeah. Pretty amazing stuff, huh? The melting part comes even cooler in the targums. Does it? All right, let's hit it. 13, out the targums at the top. And it came to pass that in the evening the the came up, huh? the pheasants came up and covered the camp. In the morning there was a fall of kodesh dew prepared as a table round about the camp. Um, are pheasants quails? I don't think they are. Are they pheasants? Have this big long tail. Do quails have that tail? I don't know. Anyone look? Uh, you have internet? Somebody look that up. I don't. I don't know if that's the same. Why we have two different birds here? Let's uh, continue on the. And the clouds ascended and caused manna to descend upon the dew. And there was upon the face of the desert a minute in lines, minute as the hoarfrost upon the ground. Now, what do you suppose that means? And there was upon the face of the desert a minute in lines, minute as the hoarfrost upon the ground. I don't know what exactly that means. Anyone? I, mean, well, I, don't, I don't think it's the same kind of minute we know. I think it's something else. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what it's talking about. The minute there says substance in lines. Okay, 1615. And... Okay. Namely, chicken, quails, and pheasants are closely related, but that's where the similar it ends. When it comes to size, color, and plumage, and diet, have it each. Is this from Brother Gwen? Uh-uh. Different oh. from the other. Even though all three animals produce by laying eggs, there are many distinguishing characteristics. Okay, so uh, that is something that is different in scriptures, which is what people need to understand. Again, quail or pheasants, I don't think it may, it's a salvation issue, but there's definitely, in the Targums, this is this is the thing we found with the Targums, is you got to gotta spit the bones and chew the meat, because I, I do think there's, they're, they're like, there's, 
I don't think a quail is a pheasant like Nicole said. So um, let's continue on. 15. And the sons of Yashrael beheld and wondered and said, a man to his companion. Man who? For they knew not what it was. And I don't know. Is that a question? Uh, that, man who? Yeah, I think they were trying to say mana. Like someone said mana or something. Like, I don't know what it is, but I think that's like mana or something is what they're saying. Like, that's, <laughs> the only, that's the only thing I could figure out. The target is definitely some interesting stuff. Okay. For they knew not what it was. And Moshe said to them, it is the bread which, is, ha, which has been laid for you from the beginning in the heavens on high. And now Yahuwah will give it to you to eat. And sorry, we have dogs doing something weird. This is the word which Yahuwah has dictated. You are to gather of it, every man according to the number of your souls. Every man according to the mouth of the number of the persons of his tabernacle are you to take. And the sons of Yashrael did so, and gathered manna more, more or less. But when they measured by the homer, omer, nothing remained above the measure of him who had gathered much. And he who had gathered little wanted nothing of the measure, every man according to the mouth of his, his eating. So they gathered. All right, so I, I, I found this fascinating because I, I, I was going to comment in Yah's scriptures on this thing. But it, what it sounds like to me on that, it doesn't matter how much you gathered. It'll at the all, end, it was the same measurement. They all, all end up the same. Yeah, so if you're some greedy dude out there that's like, I'm going to get 15 omers of this. You look in your basket, you got like one omer. And so that, that's what it seems to me that they're talking about. Okay, 19. And Moshe said to them, let no man make a, a reserve of it till the morning. But some of them hearkened not to Moshe. Dothan and Ebrim, men of weakness, did, did reserve of it till the morning. But it produced worms and putrefied. And Moshe was angry with them. Oh, we this is the though. first called time. Out. Those are the Koroks guys again. Yeah, so these are the first time we actually get names to these guys. So Dothan and Ebrim, yeah. So um, this, is, this isn't even, I mean, these people are, they don't die to like numbers, right? Mm -hmm. So these people are bad dudes. And so even back in Exodus, it appears they were messing with Moshe. Okay, 21. And they gathered from the time of the dawn until the fourth hour of the day, every man according to his eating. But at the fourth hour, when the sun had waxed hot upon it, it liquefied and made streams of water, which flowed away into the great sea. And wild animals that were cling and cattle came to drink it. And the sons of Yashrael hunted and ate them. Um, that's interesting. That's mm -hmm. something you never, ever get anywhere else. Um, so there we are with this because uh, I guess Yah said the, the meat would come. And so possibly did they hunt all that stuff, all the wild animals that came? And they, maybe they hunted that meat? Uh, that's what the Targum says. And again, if it's not in the scriptures, we need to take it with a grain of salt. It just becomes uh, an adjective, a description, a something that, that we can take note of. But if you're trying to make something like this doctrine, it's probably not a good idea because we, we don't know. A lot of these... Um, the, the Jewish folks went crazy with as well. Okay, 22. Uh, 22 on the bottom. And it came to be on the sixth day that they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for each one. And all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moshe. And he said to them, this is what Yahuwah has said. Tomorrow's a rest, a Shabbat, Kodesh to Yahuwah, that which you bake, bake, and that which you cook, cook, and lay up for yourselves all that is left over to keep it until morning. A huge takeaway from this verse is tomorrow's arrest, a Shabbat Kodesh, which means holy, to Yahuwah, which is what today is for all of us, right? We are here because we love Yah. We love our creator. We want to do what he says to do. And, you know, honestly, we don't know if the Saturday on the Gregorian calendar, which we call the seventh day, is the seventh day. There is absolutely so much confusion on this calendar everywhere that you just, I mean, the, the, Honestly, a seventh day could be a Wednesday. We, we do not know. We are thousands of years later. You have hundreds of calendars. You have all of these people on this. And until we have our Messiah, until Messiah comes and clears this up for us, I don't think we'll ever make it through the calendars. I don't think we'll ever be able to agree on a certain date or time. We have said it here on the what we believe is the seventh day. I would not be surprised to find out if Tuesday was the seventh day and we have this all wrong when Messiah comes. So when, we, when he makes it, we're probably going to be readjusting everything that we know. Okay, 23. Uh, is it 24, 24. Huh? 24. 24. And they laid it up till morning, as Moshe commanded, and it did not stink, and no worm was on it. And Moshe said, eat it today, for today is a Shabbat to Yahuwah. Today you do not find it in the field. Gather it six days, but on the seventh day, 
which is the Shabbat, there is none. And it came to be that some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather, but they found none. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, how long shall you refuse to guard my commands and my Torah? You know, Moshe, what, what's he supposed to say to this, right? These are the people of Yah. He's out there watching them. Everybody's supposed to be in their tents. Everybody's supposed to be chilling, everybody. But then you have a whole bunch of people that are out in the field looking for manna. They did not follow it. And Yahuwah is very frustrated. He's frustrated this. Moshe is very frustrated. He doesn't, he doesn't know. He doesn't know why these people are so stiff necked. 29. See, because Yahuwah has given you the Shabbat for two days on the sixth day. Let each one stay. Do not let anyone go out of his place on the seventh day. So here we have more understanding of what a Shabbat is. Where, where are we supposed to be doing? How are we supposed to be observing it, right? It's supposed to be a day of rest. If we're getting our cars, driving downtown, heading into the mall and doing all sorts of stuff, right? That's not a day of rest. You're, you're working. It, it's not supposed to be so. 30. So the people rested on the seventh day. And the house of Yisrael called its name manna. And it was like coriander seed, like white coriander seed. And the taste of it was like thin cakes made with honey. So it's actually like uh, really tasty stuff, you would think, right? Mm -hmm. 32. And Moshe said, this is the word which Yahuwah has commanded. Fill an omer with it to keep for your generations so that they see the bread with which I fed you in the wilderness when I brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim. And Moshe said to Aaron, take a pot and put an omer of manna before Yahuwah to keep for your generations. As Yahuwah commanded Moshe, so Aaron put it down before the witness to keep. And the children of Israel ate manna 40 years until they came to an inhabited land. They ate manna until they came to the border of land of Canaan. And an omer is one-tenth of an ephah. Let's head back up to the Targums at the top and we'll finish this up. And it came to pass on the sixth day they gathered double bread, two omers, a man. And all the princes of the congregation came and told Moshe, and Moshe said to them, this which Yahuwah has told you to do, tomorrow is the rest of the set apart Sabbath before Yahuwah, that which is needful to have to bake for tomorrow, bake today. And what is needful to boil for tomorrow, boil today. And all whatever remains of that which on today, lay it up and it shall be preserved until morning. And they laid it up until the morning as Moshe had directed them. And it did not corrupt and no worm was in it. And Moshe said to them, eat today, because this is the Sabbath day before Yahuwah. This day you will not find in any field. Six days you shall gather, but on the seventh day, no manna will come down. And it was on the seventh day some of the wicked people went forth to gather manna, but they found none. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, how long will you refuse to keep my commandments and my Torah? Because, behold, because I have given you the Shabbat, I gave you on the sixth day bread for two days. Let every man abide in his place and not wander from one locality to another beyond four yards, nor let any man go forth to walk beyond 2,000 yards on the seventh day. Okay, let's like talk about leaven. leaven yeah, yeah, this is this is a leaven thing. This is a Jewish thing right here. We have nothing in scriptures that tells us how far you should go. And this is definitely what you call Judaism. And the religion, again, a satanic religion of Judaism, has hundreds of laws for Shabbat. And so when it says right here, not wander from one locality to another, we can kind of glean that from regular scriptures that we're supposed to stick around and really not just cruise around and do a whole bunch of stuff that we want to do. But then it brings in four yards, which is 12 feet. That's ridiculous. Nor let any man go forth to walk beyond 2,000 yards on the seventh day. Now, that's a long ways. 2,000 yards, we're talking like um, 1.2 miles, I think. 5,280 feet is a mile. And so if we're talking 2,000 yards, that's, that's a lot. That's, that's 6,000. That's, that's over a mile. I, you know, that, those are things that we should have to consider. But please understand that none of this is in the regular scriptures. So it's probably good advice. I don't think you should be walking two miles on a Shabbat. I don't think that's rest. Um, so you consider it probably good information, but the whole beyond four yards, that's crazy. I mean, that's like literally 12 feet. Um, that would mean you couldn't even walk out in your yard. And the day of rest is not about intricacies. It's not about a whole bunch of laws and stressing us out with it. What we know of, of the Shabbat is that we are to rest and we are not to make people to, to purchase things. We are not to buy things. Our, 
the people working for us are not to be working. Our cattle are not to be working. You're not supposed to harness up your oxen or you know, take them out and make them work, any of that kind of stuff. And so please don't get this, this piece of leaven mixed up with, with, with scriptures because that's what we do here is we like to expose things of that nature. And this is definitely some leaven that has been added. Okay, uh, 30. For the people shall repose on the seventh day. And the house of Yashrael called the name of it manna. And it was like the seed of coriander, white, and the taste of it like preparations of honey. And Moshe said, this is a thing which Yahuwah has commanded to lay up of it a omer, full to keep your generations, that perverse generations may see the bread which you have eaten in the wilderness in your coming forth out of the land of Mitzrayim. And Moshe said to Aaron, take one earthen vase and put therein a full omer of manna and lay it up before Yahuwah to be kept unto your generations. And Yahuwah commanded Moshe, so did Aaron, lay it up before the testimony to be kept. And the children of Yashrael ate the manna 40 years until they came to an, to an inhabited land. Manna, they did not, they, manna did they eat 40 days after his death until they passed the Jordina and entered into the borders of the land of Canaan. See, that's another thing we, we, we didn't know they ate manna 40 days after his death. Um, which would probably be about right. It was about 40 days before Joshua made it into there because we know from the time they stepped over into the promised land that the manna stopped. So that's probably 40 days. That's probably right. Again, that's we, we don't know that. It doesn't tell us scriptures or anything like that, but um, the Targum seems to end up with stuff like this. Okay, 1636. In a Homer, and they said Homerah, is one-tenth of three seahs. And so if you're looking for what that is to, to us, to we can under, it's one-tenth of an effa. Okay. All right. Well, that does it for all of us. Um, thank you guys to everybody who stuck around. Listen in. On, we really appreciate y'all. We love you all. And we really, really appreciate hanging with us during these times. Jade, will you please bless the people for us? You who bless you and guard you. You who makes face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. You will lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And you shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Okay, much love to everybody out there, Mr. Cole. Is there anything else going on in the chat? You want to say anything? No, they were just discussing when daytime is nice. Okay. All right, guys. Well, this is it. Dogs are going to get rowdy like they always do. We apologize. Hit it, say it.
All right, fam. We love you guys very, very much. We thank you guys for being a part of our family. May Yahweh bless you and keep you. May his light forever shine upon you. May he grace us with majesty and may you forever find the love of Messiah Yahushua. Thank you all. Shalom. 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 Shalom.